Christ. Pour out your heart to him. Just because the music stopped doesn't mean our worship stops. Hallelujah. We glorify you, Jesus. We thank you that every single one of your promises and your word is true, God, that we can cling to, God, that we can live our lives by you, Jesus. Jesus, that we can reject what is false and we can cling to what is true. We thank you that you are always be tries to tell us that you're not enough, God, but we know you will always, always be enough, church. Can we have everybody here in this place just close your eyes? I really believe that the Holy Spirit has a word for you here today. I really believe we're going to sing this next song, No Longer Slaves to Sin. And I really believe that there is a majority of you in here that are, are defined by your sin, are defined by your guilt, are defined by PTSD, by problems, by sickness, by disease. But my Bible reads that Christ died that I might have life and life more abundantly. My Bible says that the same power that raised Christ from the dead lives inside of me and that I have claims and authority and power in the name of Jesus. And when Jesus, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords is on the throne of my heart, that I can claim things, that I can ask God to come and to heal and to give me victory in this place. Do you believe it, church? Do you believe it? Because the one who can change everything in an instant is here in this room right now. And he desires to empower you, to move in you, in your marriage, in your relationship, with those stubborn kids everything with your job, with those situations, he can do it. Just because you haven't seen it yet doesn't mean that it can't happen. Our God is a God of miracles. Our God is not dead, church, but he is alive. He is alive, church. And I couldn't sit back there in my cage and not come back and tell you that he is in this place. And if you need a victory in your life, if you said, you know what, this sin in my life that's been holding me up, holding me back for so long, I don't want to have any part of it anymore, then we want you to come to these altars. We want you to lay it here at his feet, and we want you to be free from that, amen? So the altars are going to be open. We're going to sing. We're going to claim freedom, victory. We're going to pray. We're going to claim the precious blood of Jesus over our lives today. And if that's you, you need that freedom. You need that victory. You need that healing. You need that restoration. Whatever it is that you need, do not leave this place without giving it to Jesus. Don't leave it. Don't take it with you. He, he bore it on himself for you. So if that's you today, please, please come to these altars. Cry on your face. Put your face. Whatever you need to do, meet with Jesus this morning.
you ride with us this morning. Be sure to stay after church. Even if you're visiting with us today, you just happen to walk through the door today. I'm going to check out Bread of Life. You are invited to a luncheon right after service today. Stay and join us. We're going to, we're going to be bringing in a blow up for the children to play on. That's going to be coming a little bit later. Guys, if you could help us pick up the uh, tables, pick up the chairs, roll out some round tables, put chairs back around them. That would be great. But leaving that whole section open for the, uh, the blow up that's coming, okay? We're going to have the Patriot game on in the uh, foyer as well, so you won't miss the game that'll be going. So be sure to join us as our guest today, all right? A couple things. We're going to be having a water baptism on October the 21st right here. So if you've never been water baptized, if you're a believer in Christ, it's not something Bread of Life came up with, it's what Jesus came up with. It's a sacred ordinance. So follow him in obedience and be water baptized. That'll be happening. There's a sign-up sheet out on the foyer. Be sure to sign up, okay? All right? And we're having a men's breakfast on the 20th at the Colonial Hotel. Pastor Joel will be sharing that morning. So make life easier. Don't come here and set up and tear down and cook and everything. Let that restaurant do all the cooking. We'll do all the fellowshipping. We're going to have a great time. So be sure to sign up for that as well. All right? All you can eat buffet. Well, sometimes I just give announcements, but today I'm doing an infomercial. That's what the Lord told me this morning, infomercial. We wanted to take um, a few minutes out of um, the service today to kind of reset and regroup. And we wanted to kind of highlight a few of the ministries that go on at Bread of Life. And we're going to take, take about 10 minutes, maybe 10, 15 minutes at the most. And um, we want you, because there's a lot of new people, and we want you to know that so much a part of your growing and so much a part of you moving forward in God is not only what you're hearing, it's what you're doing with what you're hearing, amen? And the body of Christ and the, and the souls that God wants to bring in depend on God's people working and serving and doing. Um, before um, we, we get into um, our ministries, I'm going to first ask you to, in your bulletin, there's a sheet of paper in there that I want you to pull out. Okay? And if you don't have one, we'll make sure you have it. 
And on it are all different areas of ministry. And um, I have like d different people that are going to come up. If, you, if I've asked you to speak, if you can come sit in the front row, that would be great. Um, they're going to just speak for like two minutes. It's not, it's not going to be super long, but they're just going to give either a testimony or explain to you exactly how you can be a part of that particular ministry. Well, what we'd like you to do on this is if you're just even interested, you're not signing up for anything, you're not saying unless you want to, um, just check off what you're interested in. Write your name. And then when the offering plates come, you can either put it in the offering or you can hold it for a little bit and you can you can ask us questions during the dinner. And, you know, as we're hanging out together, you can talk, you can slip it under the door, you can get it to us whenever you want. But please make mention if you have any questions that maybe are not being answered on this sheet, you can't check it off right in front of you, okay? But this is what we want to follow when we get to it. But this morning, um, I've, before we, I'm, I'm going to read a scripture. Pastor and I were really... Um, we were praying about this, and this is really a season of reset. That's the only word I can think of, is reset. And every time that we would go to plan something, and think, oh, we need to do this, we need to do that, we need to do this, we need that, we need Bible study, you know, whatever, new Bible study, what's, what's the, the next curriculum? A Holy Spirit has been so clear with us that he doesn't want anything other than your attention and my attention hearing him personally, and together. And, you know, part of the reset, you know, like when we talk about some of these things today, I'm going to read this particular scripture, which is going to kind of be what pastor's going to be preaching on, but I'm just going to read it. This is kind of what was motivating everything behind the ministries and why we kind of want, you know, it's like the undergirding of all of them. But one of the things about being a child of God is that we're also called a disciple. And when we were praying about what we were going to do for our next Bible study, it was really clear to us that God was like, all I want you to do is open this and do what God said the day Jesus was baptized. This is my son. Listen to him. Now, there are people who are new in the faith who have never learned how to really open the word of God and, and hear God's voice through the word of God or just really examine Jesus' life. Because that's what being a disciple is. It's being a follower of him. It's sitting at his feet. And listening to him, watching what he does, and then being an imitator of that. See, that's what being a Christian really is. It's not just having all your problems fixed or having a place to go on Sundays to appease your conscience. It really is about following Jesus. Now, for a lot of people, they've never walked that journey before. The simplicity of it. They've got, got, gotten saved. They go to church, and they wonder why nothing's changing in their life. It's because we're not in the Word. And then there are those of us that have been in this a long time, and when we hear discipleship class, we think, oh, you've been there, done that. I don't need that. Well, I don't think that's necessarily true, because Jesus himself, even to the church in Ephesus, said, you know something, you're doing a lot of good things for me, but you've forsaken your first love. So he says to them, you just need to come back and do the simple things you did at first. All right? And we do it together, and we do it communally, and we talk about the Word of God. So on Wednesday nights, we're going to be opening up the church. It's going to be an adult study, and it's called Authentic Jesus. I don't know, Sean, could you just pull that slide up in the PowerPoints? It's Authentic Jesus is what it's called. And what we're going to do is we're going to be opening the Word of God. Pastor and I are going to just open the book of Mark, and we're going to begin with Mark. Because we were, we were sitting here trying to find, and God was like, no curriculum. Just open the word of God, what I tell you, and just begin to talk. Authentic Jesus. How many of you want an authentic Jesus? See, the world needs that. If you want to be an authentic disciple, then I invite you to come out at 6.30 on Wednesday nights. This is a spirit-led journey. A spirit-led journey through the teachings of Jesus. Yeah. So if God decides one week, he's, he's laying on him something that's in a whole other God, then that's where we're going. But we're going to start in the book of Mark, and we're going to look at the miracles of Jesus first, and we're going to go through that book. But we're going to come, come with your Bible, be prepared to open it, and talk about it. And it's not just going to be us preparing and you sitting and listening. We want you to engage, and it's okay. And if you've never, and I'm, I'm telling you, if you believe you're a believer and nothing is happening in your life and nothing is changing and you don't know why, it's because you're not in the Word of God. Because I guarantee you that once you taste of the bread of life, really and truly, 
you will never be satisfied with anything else. Mm -hmm. Everything else will fall in comparison. So that's part of what, we, what we're talking about as we come into this season in regard to ministries. But this was the scripture verse. The pastor's going to be preaching on it. The first uh, seven uh, words of this scripture in 1 Peter chapter 4 was kind of maybe what most of us felt this week when we were watching the news. The end of all things is near. <laughs> even so, come Lord Jesus, right? No, but having said that, without even laughing, the end of all things, things, it's all temporary. Jesus is nearer now than he's ever been before, and we all sense it, we know it. And this is what uh, Peter writes here. Therefore, because we know this, be clear-minded and self-controlled so that you can pray. Okay? Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength that God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Now it's going to be a good message today because pastor's going to preach. Amen. But what I'd like to do is I want to begin by looking at this, and I just want to tell you about some of the ministries that you can be involved with. I'm going to ask first for, um, Sean, are you ready with the slides for the PowerPoint? Uh, yeah. Okay. The first one should be Connect for Hospitality Team. Okay. Well, who's representing? Come on up. This is Donna Marshall. Donna, give Donna a hand. If you enjoy the show, if you enjoy the show, you Donna, the whole team of people are out there. And you need more help. We, we do tell them a little bit about what you do and how people can be involved. I would love to. First of all, it has been said that a way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Yes. <laughs> Firmly believe that. Yes. <laughs> and the heart of the church, I believe, is the kitchen, the same as the home. We love serving the people in this church. It is something that we do because of the love we have for Christ. And we're not just back there getting food ready. For you people, we do it as if we were doing it unto the Lord. Yeah. Jesus said it was just a cup of water was given in his name. And if you've stayed for any of our lunches, you know that you get a lot more than a cup of water. <laughs> I want to thank Sam Marshall, is one of our new members. Yeah. And, Kendra yeah, Bushy. Yeah, yeah. and Kendra Bushy. But we could use more help. And if you have a love for people and a love for cooking, this is the ministry for you. And I will tell you, that we have some awesome, awesome cooks in this place. I am blown away when I see the desserts and the things that come in and the love that the people put into it. So if you are interested in this, you can let any one of us know. You'll find us in the kitchen, and we would love to have you on board. And if you have made some things and left dishes in the kitchen, we have a lot of those too. You might yeah. want to claim them <laughs> so you can make some more. God bless. Amen. <laughs> Renee's coming up. Renee's going to share about the meals ministry, and that, that's ministry to uh, people care ministries. Um, but what I also want to let you know is, if you look on the sheet, it's not just that. The Connect for Hospitality Committee is the weekly um, um, coffee fellowship. It's the um, Connect for the monthly Sunday meals. You might want to just be involved in church events, or when we do big, big meals that are outreaches. The kitchen team meets cooks and prep people and clean up, and um, and then of course there's hospitality that gets outside of the doors. And Renee's going to tell you about that and make me involved. Um, interestingly enough, on the way to church today, I heard two separate sermons on exactly the same thing. And one of the points, one of the gentlemen made was, you know what, when Jesus died on that cross, it was to lead us to heaven, but in between here and heaven is the cross. That's right. Our own personal cross. And this fellow was saying, this sort of thing is a little cross. Take up your little cross, give. That's you know, right. freely you've been given. You've been given your health and your intelligence and your hands and so many things you've been given. Freely give. Amen. Now this outside, this is for when someone is um, typically the, the chief cook and bottle washer in their home and they're incapacitated for whatever reason. Yep, had a baby. Yep, had an operation. And, you know, and it, it's not 
It's not like we feed them for a month, but it's one or two or three meals just, just as a form of relief. Now, for gentlemen who say, well, I'm a single guy and, you know, I don't cook, I run a microwave, we also take, like, gift cards to different restaurants, or even if you just gave some money so that somebody else could cook, all of that, all of that counts. The Lord sees all of that. And it's one of these cases where you think, you know what, if it were me, I wish somebody would bring me something. And sometimes we think, oh, oh pa spaghetti, that's not very impressive. Hey, you know what? <laughs> when you're home and you're sick and you don't feel like cooking, a pot of spaghetti is marvelous. Especially, and everybody's just different. I've never ever eaten spaghetti. Let's see. Let's see, Chef So if you have any questions about the meals ministry, check that off. The more people that are on that rotation, the better, you know, and it's not like you have to feed for a week, you know, sometimes it's just like, I, I can provide that meal, you know what, I can, I can provide a gift card, let them go out and buy pizza, you know, for the night, just that sometimes, especially if, if there's somebody in the hospital and people are driving back and forth, um, you know, it, it just, it, it, they need to eat on the road even, it, it's a blessing, so be sure to, um, to check that out as well. Okay, thank you for that. The next ministry is the clothing, is it the, the Bread of Life clothing line, Sean? Where is it? Oh, here oh, the welcoming. No, no, no. Put, put the welcoming team on. That's okay. Put, put it back. Okay, this is basically, and you would be seeing Pastor Gary on this, but the welcoming team is for greeters on Sunday mornings. Um, it's also, um, we need a volunteer driver. You know, people, because I'm, I'm praying in a van, but if I don't have somebody who's going to go out and drive that van and go pick people up, I don't think God's going to give us a van. So, if you're like, you know what, I'm single, I'm free on a Sunday morning, I don't mind picking up a couple of people, that would be a huge, huge help. Um, let us know about that. And then Pastor is, is looking for um, some people who really have the gift of welcome, the love to talk to people, you love to meet people and greet them, outside of even the greeters at the door, because they're kind of busy there. But if you're somebody that you're like, you know what, on a Sunday morning, I want to kind of walk around and be sure to be the person to walk up to somebody who's sitting there and just greet them and say hello. You know, kind of what you see me do every week. We need more of me is what I'm trying to say. So, well, a little bit of me. Not too much of me, but a little bit of me. Okay, so if you're interested in that, you want to see Pastor. The next one is the clothing barn. And let me just say, the clothing barn has been taken over by um, Kathy Bailey and Sarah Jacobson. And they have been doing a phenomenal job running the bag. I'm serious. Taking the clothes, organizing it. It's been amazing. They are very shy. They don't want to talk. So they've kind of asked me to um, just let you know that um, the, um, the congregation has been so generous with all the different um, all the different clothes. And just so that you know that it gets shifted in and out, we bring it to different um, different areas. It goes to, like when clothes have been with us for a while, we bring to Ginny's in Lemister, the Epilepsy Foundation. Most recently, we sent um, clothes down to the flood victims in Carolina. We have clothes that go to Haiti once a year. Um, so it, it, this blessing barn is really, truly a blessing. And we have people now coming in. We get clothing to the homeless at the um, breakfast. Fitchburg, um, that's a whole other ministry. Um, but what I've asked uh, Joyce, Joyce and Don just decided, well, they're home. She retired. She said, well, we'll go in the barn. We'll work. And um, they, so they go in and they open the barn on Tuesdays and Thursdays, right? Uh, Thursdays and Sundays. Thursdays and Sundays. Tell, tell us, give us a reason why you're joining back in the barn. Well, uh, Don really wanted to get involved with uh, the clothing barn. And so we decided that we would be there to open up because they needed somebody to let the people in and to come and shop. And it has been such a blessing. We have met so many wonderful people, repeat customers who bring in donations as well as shopping. Um, it has just been so fantastic. The stories we've heard, um, it it's, is a definite blessing. Oh, yeah. and quick, um, Operation Christmas Child. A, a quick testimony. There is a woman who, at her church, has been building up all of her supplies for making boxes. They do a packing party. Their church stopped doing it. So she looked for a place to donate all this stuff that she already had. So she brought it here. Six large boxes. And about seven or eight medium to small boxes, all categorized. This woman is amazing. I, oh no! We just did a double our goal. 
We certainly are, and I need help inventorying this stuff. God is good. God is good. Give her a hand. Okay, the next is Special Touch at Ministry. Well, Kim comes on up um, with the barn. Those of you who have different ideas, some of you are more, um, back to the barn again, you're more creative and you have ideas and connections and you have different ideas of ways that we can be a blessing. One of the things I would like to do is see that bus converted into a, a, um, a clothing barn that we take to the streets, which would be awesome. But so we want to be creative. This isn't just about opening the doors. We want to get out as well. So if you're somebody who's got vision like that, come see us, okay? Because we want to grow. We don't want to just sustain. We want the input. That, that's what matters. Okay, so Kim and Mike Ferguson. Good morning. Yep. Oh, why did you say keep it quick? I know. It's going to take it forever. I know. <laughs> anyway, I'm okay. So I want to first of all say thank you to Bread of Life because... This church has been a fabulous support to us as a couple and to Special Touch as a ministry. Um, would you mind, real quick, if you've helped in either camp or the chapter, would you please stand up for a minute, real quick? All right. So if you would like to hear more about what we're doing, talk to us or one of these folks. I guarantee that they have had an experience that has changed their lives. So we want to invite you to participate in the chapter that happens monthly and the getaway. Please see one of us after, during the Connect Four lunch, um, because we have plenty of ways to get you involved, no matter what you might think. And Mike has something quick that he wants to say. I just want to thank our guys for this year at Getaway. Bill, Joe, you guys, love you, man, men. So glad to be able to share with you and have you help us at Getaway. And we're really, really looking for more men as we expect growth this year, Amen. as we did last year. And we're really going to need more men and ladies, but men caregivers. Amen. 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 On your sheet, you'll see that there are a variety of ways. Here's the other thing. The Special Touch Ministry. Not only, you know, can you be involved in the monthly meetings, these support not only the, the, the client, I hate to use that word, but the caretakers, the guests but also the caretakers. And that's what this ministry is about. And we all know people that are, that are walking that journey. Um, also, um, to volunteer at the getaway, but be a part of the spring if you like to bowl. Be a part of the fundraiser. That's another one that's coming up. But also, if you want have questions yourself personally, okay, you have a personal need for this ministry, or you know somebody, fill that out on the bottom too. Okay, that's what this is here for. That's why I wanted you to see that. Okay, Church Helps Ministry. I just want to just run by this. This is basically, you would see Pastor Gary about this. Um, you know, work around the church. You see the trustees. It would be things like painting, doing outdoor, um, outdoor kind of stuff, shoveling, plowing, gardening, um, building maintenance. Um, when we do big cleaning jobs, right, Laura Smith, wherever she is, um, we need you. So that's part of the Church Helps Ministry. Then the, now there's Kids Ministries. I'm going to ask Mary Ann to come up and deal yet. Kids Church Ministry and Nursery. Good morning, everyone. I love working with your kids, so I want to say thank you for bringing your kids here to church because we're having a great time back there. We're doing shipwreck right now, and uh, today we're learning about how Jesus rescues us when we struggle. And I'm passing my captain's hat off to Pastor Billy, uh, Captain Billy today. He will be the captain of the ship today. But we're really excited about what God is doing with the kids and coming up is going to be the Christmas musical. Now, this isn't just for kids. If you've been in any of our musicals in the last few years, you know that we put adults and teenagers in this group, too. And I need you. I really, really need you. So if you, are, if you could please uh, see me uh, about being part of the Christmas musical, I would love it. It's called uh, the Christmas Express. And it's all about journey to joy. And so I'm really excited about it, but I need um, some help. So um, if you could see me, I won't be here in the Connect Board today, but um, I, I will be around, so you can find me. I'm always here. So uh, thank God for all of you. What needs you have back there? Um, I need teachers. I need helpers. Um, in both groups, I have the pre-K uh, up to age five in one room, and then we have the elementary kids in the other room. Uh, we really need people who are willing to work a rotation. You don't have to come up with the curriculum. We give you everything you need. Um, so please um, see me. If you even just want to help out or just come in and sit with us and see how it works, we'd love that too. Um, because 
These kids are your future. That's right. Church. That's right. They are the, going to be the leaders of the church, but if they don't know the word of God, mm -hmm. they're, going, they're not going to do well. So we want them to learn the word of God. We want them to know how great our God is and how he can help them in their walk with him. So um, please come and see one of us. We'd love to have you be part of our team. And Headmaster Delia. Yes. <laughs> Runs the nursery toddler area. Um, so to just help. Help. <laughs> that what you want to say? Help. Yeah. Um, so we're pretty short staffed most of the time. Um, we're, I mean, there's two rooms back there. There's the nursery room and the toddler room. We separated the ages because we all had them, had them all jumbled in there um, for a while. It was a bit much having the ones running around with the little babies. So we separate those two groups. Um, so we need four staff back there every Sunday. <clears throat> Usually pretty easy on the five week. Month, five week months, it's pretty tough to get the extra, that's four extra people. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people are back there twice a month. Um, so if you have any questions about that, just come see me. That sounds good. And any of the ministries, just so that you know, whether it be kids' ministries, nursery, or even youth, um, there are quarry backgrounds and checks and all of that as well, which is on the sheet. So if you're interested in any of those, that would be great. Also for um, the children's ministries, we're also doing a lot, we want to plan a lot of family activities with the kids, do different things. I've been talking to Rebecca and, um, and um, uh, Sarah, and we're, we're planning something for the harvest party. If you're a parent and you just want to be involved, you don't even have to be a parent, but we, we want to just do some really, really fun things with the kids. I have an idea about the state room, but that's a whole other story. Wouldn't that be fun? Anyway, so um, my ideas are going. So if you're interested in that, and the other thing that we need as well is I need people who are open to on-call babysitting. It could be teenagers that have their, you know, whatever that little credential that they need or that they get, or even adults. There are times when we're having a women's event that we need child care so that some women can really be ministered to, or just if somebody in the church is like, I need a babysitter. Um, you know, I, I have reference, and we can, we can lead people to and connect people up for that, so that's something. All right, um, and then the last um, that we have before Pastor Joel comes up is Homeless Breakfast Outreach. Now, that is uh, three Sundays a month down at the Fitchburg Y. And Emily McCray, who doesn't necessarily come to our church every week like she visits, but she's the one who runs it and will give you the number. But I did ask Dee if she would share, uh, because she's like one of the main people who's still down there. And I wanted her, she shared a testimony, and we'll keep it, but you know, it, it, was, it was a good one. I'll share that. That was so good. This is Dee Reed. <coughs> Morning, everybody. Morning. So how many of you know what the Y ministry is? Show of hands. Okay, so for those of you who don't, um, the first, second, and third Sunday, we have a group of volunteers that come together. We provide a breakfast, a hot meal, um, a to-go lunch, clothing, um, fellowship, um, and things of that nature. So it's, it's really great. We have a lot of people, 30, 40 people come at a time, a lot of people who are struggling. They're not necessarily always homeless. Sometimes they're just very much struggling financially. So I have a really quick testimony to share. God's timing is, is amazing. So I was going through my closet, my linen closet, and I, I put a bunch of curtains and um, some pillowcases and stuff like that in this um, bag for the Y. So I go down there and normal, you know, setting everything up and whatnot, and I'm trying to make things look pretty, you know, before everybody gets there. <laughs> And um, so I noticed that there was this pillowcase there, this really long body, body pillowcase. And it had writing on it. I'm like, oh, no, I think it's my daughter's. I'm like, so I'm texting her a picture of it. I'm like, oh, no. And then it dawned on me after I sent her the picture that it was actually a pillowcase from 2009 when I was teaching Sunday school um, at, at, a, at a different church. Um, and I got in a really bad car accident. I was in the hospital for a week. I was out of work for three months. It was a really rough time. And all the kids had gotten together and they had signed this pillowcase, this body pillow, giving me a body pillow and this pillowcase. So I'm like, oh. So I left it off to the side. I'm like, oh, what a nice memory. So I'm just flitting around, you know, and, you know, going out and greeting people and, and, and whatnot. And I saw this woman sitting there and she was doing, I'm not really good at it, but like a cross stitch, something with a, like embroidery type thing. And I went over, I'm like, oh, how are you? You know, what are you doing? She goes, oh, I'm, I'm making this for my daughter. And she was making all fancy designs. It was her daughter's birthday. She goes, I love doing stuff like this. She said, it's a pillowcase. 
And immediately I started thinking, oh my goodness, I had brought that pillowcase. So I'm like, you know what, I have something just for you. So we went right back, she followed me, she was all excited. And um, I gave her the pillowcase and she was like a child on Christmas morning. She was like so excited. So it was like, I it was totally unexpected and it's just one of those moments where you just feel like, you know, God really kind of just uses you where you're at. But you just, you just got to show up, you got to be willing and you know what I mean? And when he meets you out in the mission fields like that, it just, it made my whole week. It was like the best. So I encourage you, we, we need a lot of help. And there's something about getting out of these four walls. I'm telling you, God is moving. He truly is. Um, and lastly, um, before Pastor Joel is going to come up, we just want to let you know that um, you'll see an area down there that says specific ministry needs with Pastor Gary or Janice. And um, the, any of you who have like a real burden for women's ministries or men's ministries, guys, see Pastor Gary or I, because we really need to get a team together of, of people. It doesn't mean that you're going to run it unless you want to and God calls you. Um, but that you, you know, that you have, you have input, you have ideas and thoughts, and we want to, we want to utilize you in that area. If you're um, somebody who has experience with recovery uh, groups or emotional, like type healing type groups, small group, um, see us. Those are the kinds of ministries that we want you to see us about. Um, if you're interested in possibly opening your home for future activate small groups, which you'll hear about in the coming months, uh, let us know that, and all that's down on the bottom um, page. Um, Angie's going to share when she comes back up to worship, and uh, Pastor Joel, Woo! you want to come on up and tell us a little bit about what you got going for you, yeah. young adults, media, whatever else you're doing, you're doing everything. Oh, you don't need anything, right? I need that, okay, here we go. This one over here. Can we all just give it up for Pastor Janice? So, I'm new to this place, so hearing all of these uh, ministries is, wow, it's fantastic. You guys are doing a lot. It's fantastic. So I'm here to ask you to do more. How's that sound? Right? So uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Pastor Joel. I was recently hired here to uh, what was it, do everything. Is that the... No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, but I have a call to work with youth. God called me when I was 16 years old at a youth camp to go and reach the youth of the nation. And I have been pursuing that for the past 10 years. Uh, that's what I've been doing. I've been doing youth ministry, and I love it, and it is something I'm very passionate about. Um, just this past weekend, I was actually a, a guest speaker at a thing called the Equip Conference, which was for teenagers that wanted to start Bible study groups in their schools and tell people about Jesus, which is fantastic. Um, and just being there in that atmosphere was amazing. It was incredible to see that. And I really believe this with all of my heart, that this generation of youth are going to change the world for Jesus. And I know you probably have heard that time and time and time and time again before, but I really believe it. Because they are, they are unbelievably smart and capable, and their passion uh, for, for others, and their passion against injustice, their passion for loving people, is one that I haven't seen in a long time. And one of the speakers uh, spoke about how here in New England, we... Uh, another pastor friend I was talking to him about how in New England we really like tradition, right? We like our buildings being pristine. We like having those, no, those, you know, the white. We like having everything in a specific order. And he said, "I really believe that this generation it doesn't really care about that stuff." Which is not to be disrespectful, but what is to, to say is the old standards are gone. And God wants to come in and do a fresh and a new and a mighty work in our churches through young adults, through teenagers. And that he really wants to do those things. Not to say, hey, listen, all that other stuff is gone and we don't want to deal with that anymore. There's a beauty in that. There's a faithfulness in that. But I really believe that there is a, there's an attitude that, that our youth have nowadays that says, listen, we're, we're, not really, we're not really concerned about the buildings. We're not really concerned about everything else that's happened. We're concerned about individual people. We're, into, we're concerned about the heart of God and loving people. And so I'm, I'm encouraged to tell you that we here at Bread of Life, I'm going to be starting uh, to do some stuff in the, in the motion and in the way of getting into starting to do youth ministry. Uh, for the past, past, past for, wow, excuse me, wow, words, words, Joel. For the past four weeks, 
I don't know if you have noticed, but I have, I personally, and Pastor Gary, myself, and a couple of the people on the media team have been making some changes. We have put subs in, we've changed speakers, we've moved some stuff out, you can talk to the worship team, things have sounded better. I don't know if you guys have heard a difference, but we're making some, we're making some progress. So a lot of my focus has been kind of working on that, but I really want to be switching gears to be working with, with youth, with young adults, with young marriages. That's really my passion and my heart. So October 11th, uh, I'm asking you if you are a parent of a teenager, if you are a parent of a youth, or if you're a grandparent of a youth, and you know somebody that, that you'd like to invite to come, I want you to come out. I want to just talk to you about the plans that I have, the vision that I have for, for the youth ministry here, for this community, for what I really believe that God wants to do. And also, if you are interested in working with youth, if you have a passion for youth, or even if you don't have a passion for youth, but you care about safety, you care about creating a safe environment for your children or for the people in this church. If you are just a servant and don't even want to have anything to do with kids, but you just you can help out in the background, you can help run sound, you can help on the worship, whatever it is, we want you. We want you. We want you to come and be a part of this movement, of this awesome thing that God is doing Amen. in this generation. Amen? Amen? Amen. And for you youth, the following week, October 18th on Thursday night, we're going to be getting together, and I just want to spend time with you. I just want to spend time with you. I want to let you know who I am. I'm, I feel like I'm a pretty relational person that you can kind of talk to me, even though I am 30 now. That's so um, I'm 30 now, and you look at me like I'm some kind of weirdo when I'm talking to them, even though like I'm like, I know what's going on in your head right now. Like, who is this old, kind of balding weirdo that's talking to me right now? Right, so I get it. I know Sarah Jacobs is laughing at me right now because she knows it's she knows it's true. So okay, so so we're excited about that. So switching gears, I'm gonna just talk real briefly about media. Okay, I really think that media is an important part of where the church is going. It's it's important. How many of you guys have cell phones? Really? Everybody, almost every. If you don't have a cell phone, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry for you. Uh, we'll just take up a collection for you right now. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. If you have someone, you have access to everything, right? You have access to all this information, all this wonderful stuff. And we here at Better Life, we want, I feel like we've got a good product here. I'm not going to lie to you. I feel like the, the preaching's fantastic, right? I feel like the people are amazing. I think the worship here is great. And I think that this world, this, this area needs to see that. They need to see Jesus in us. And a lot of times, I don't know if you guys know this, but a lot of times people will go and check out churches through their website first before they even come to the doors. So that so it's, it's not about people just, oh, I heard about this church up the road and they drive here and they come here and they try it out. They're not even doing that anymore. They're looking online. They're, they, they might not even get to, their, uh, to our website. They might just Google search us or whatever. But it's important for us to be kind of on that cutting edge of that, of that technology of connecting with people and reaching with people. And that requires some people, some teams. And my heart's desire is for me to kind of put together a team of people, if you're interested in any way, shape, or form, with technology, with sound, with mixing, with anything like that, please come and talk to me, because I want to put a team together. It's really, Jeff, how, how, how hard is your job back there right now? It's difficult. It's, it's so hard, right? Really, what we do is we set stuff up, we let it go, and we just kind of monitor. It's not a very hard job. It's not a very difficult job to run sound. I mean, we're not running like 20 musicians up here, right? But there's some other things that need to happen in the background that, that happen. So it's important for us to have a team. I, I, Angie and I, we have a really, really simple ministry philosophy. We believe that the Bible talks about taking a Sabbath and resting. And we don't think it's right for people to continually be doing this, like, every single week, working, working, working. So we believe in rotation. We want to put a team together. So you're only doing it once a month, twice a month, at that, at that. And that's really, we want to make sure that everybody's being fed and being involved in the ministries in this church. Amen? Amen. So, again, important dates. 11th for volunteers, for parents, for grandparents of youth. Please come out October 11th. And then the 18th is going to be uh, our youth get-together for the first time. Amen? Amen. Really? Yeah, no, really. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Amen. There we go. Um, by the way, with the youth um, under there as well, if you have, um, I, was, I was telling Joel, I said there's a lot of people in this church who have young adult kids, um, even youth that don't necessarily come to the church or they're not coming through the doors. If you're a parent and you would like your um, young adult or teen to, be, to get invites and letters, if you know what I'm saying, that we could be inviting them out to stuff, 
just let us know on that, okay? Because then we'll reach out to them. Because once they're, you know, they're a young adult, we don't, we don't want to, you know, but we want them to be aware that there's something going on here. So please just write that down on there if you're interested in that so that uh, Pastor Joel has that. Okay. Okay, I guess you can have your service back. <laughs> Thank you, everybody that shared. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for all of your ministry here at Bread of Light Church. And as you heard from their hearts, they really could use some help. Many hands make light work. Pick up a ministry. Do something. Be a part. Be a part. We're all in this together. We're all a church working. All right? Bring that community back. Let's be a community building, body building church here. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's have the children come forward. Yep. We're going to pray a blessing over them. Pre-K to sixth grade. Let's bring them all up. We can turn them loose. We're going to have fun today after church. I mean, during church. Church. Praise God. All that. Who's wearing a giant shirt? Oh, 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 oh. I'm going to need work before I should be there. I like the patrons. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to wait upon you for our morning offering. Our shoes are going to come. Pastor Joel and Angie have a special song. And Angie, after I pray, you can uh, give your discourse there. All right? Praise the Lord. Where is Pastor Joel? Are you singing with him? There he goes. Give us a Praise God. Let's bow one more time and pray. Father, bless this offering, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to sow into your kingdom. Use it for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Quickly just want to share real quick about uh, worship ministry. So I'm um, super excited to be here in this role as worship pastor. And um, I know it, some of you have heard this already, but just to remind you that I am going to be doing a worship workshop on October 13th for anyone who's interested in joining the worship team. Um, we specifically need drummers, electric guitarists. So if you happen to be like a closet drummer and nobody knows about it, come on out. We'd love to have you. Or if you're interested in learning too, come on out. We'd love to have you. We're going to just do a quick time of devotions and then some lunch and we'll just jam on out. That's at 11 a.m. Um, also, I want to say if, if you are interested in, interested in special music as well, I uh, could use anybody who would be willing to do like a solo or a duet or anything like that, an instrumentalist, could definitely use um, some volunteers with that, so come talk to me if you're interested in that as well. Um, and lastly, I, I'm going to be putting together a little ensemble for Easter, I know that's really far away, but if you're a singer and you like to do anything kind of in a choir format, Come and talk to me. I definitely need as many singers as possible. So just wanted to put a little plug out there. And um, we're going to do this, this song that's really meaning, meaningful to us. And I uh, hope it blesses you. Every burning star can't 
Thank you guys. Hallelujah. Boy, I don't know if there's anything Pastor Joel can't do. <laughs> Sound, media, speaks well, is articulate, does everything. He's not only the hair club president, he's also a client. <laughs> Remember that one? <laughs> Praise God. If you could throw the, just the scripture up there, Sean, maybe just kind of leave the scripture up there. Um, I want to talk to you about holy life, holy service this morning, and how the two go together. Charles Kuralt used to have a CBS Sunday morning news program, and he would always close it out this way, that was the week that was. And boy, that was the week that was this past week, if you know what I mean. Wow! It kind of, uh, all that went down on Thursday, kind of uh, drip-dropped and, and kind of residually spread into our prayer meeting on Thursday night. We had a uh, little trouble kind of, uh, we're, we're plowing through, uh, I don't know, not even snow. It was like wood and, uh, and, gra and gravel and sand and rock and, you know, really just impacted the group that came out that Thursday night. I kind of felt like maybe I should have preached on Isaiah 6 and identified with Isaiah who was standing before the sterling white holiness of God and he says these words, Woe to me, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell amongst the people of unclean lips. And I just feel, I, I, I pray to God that churches in America are filled today, maybe filled with people that just need a spiritual shower from the muck and mire that went down this past week in our nation. It was uh, pretty bad, pretty, pretty bad. And you know, the scripture reference, when it says here, the end, of, you know, the end is near, the end of all things is near, it sounds so morbid, doesn't it? It just sounds so morbid. And then Paul Peter gets into all these ministry exhortations, get involved in ministry, and I'll give you the setting for that in just a moment, because I was telling the prayer group the other night that the church today has a lot in common with the early church of the first century and that both of us, both us and them, believe we're living in the time of the end and believe the Lord's return is imminent. They thought that even in the first century, we believe that now, a couple thousand years later, but we have different reasons to feel that way. You know what they are? Number one, the early church felt like the Lord was returning because of what the world was doing to them. We today feel like the Lord is returning soon because of what the world is doing to itself. What the world is doing to itself. There is so much division going on. Jesus predicted kingdom against kingdom, nation against nation, and predicted to be, you know, pitting against one another in the home, you know, a son against a daughter, a daughter against a mother. There would be all kinds of clashing going on and pitting one against another that would happen. And we've always taken that to be very, you know, continental and continents and whole continents and whole countries and all these tribes of people. And that will happen in the last days. But boy, there are some galvanizing and polarizing events that have happened in our own nation that have pitted us one against another. Have there not? There's been the Vietnam War, there's been Roe versus Wade, there has been the Iraq War, there's been the O.J. Simpson trial, uh, and this latest event that's happened now, we are left and right, we are red and blue, we are Republican, Democrat, we are, you know, we really are being pitted once again, one against another. And the background of this was a whole lot of pitting ones against another. It's really the world against the church. Peter writes this in the time of the 60s in AD, the time of the 60s. And the Roman leadership hated Christians. And the reason why they hated Christians, because Christians didn't worship all their pagan gods. They didn't want to worship all their pagan gods. And a guy named Nero burns Rome about AD 64, sets it on fire. And says, well, let me make the Christians a scapegoat. They're the ones who burned Rome. They weren't. But let's make them a scapegoat. And from AD 64 to 68, up until the time of Nero's death, he persecutes the Christians. More than likely, that's when Peter is martyred, Paul is martyred. Along comes a Roman general named Titus who burns uh, in AD 70, burns Jerusalem, burns the temple, scatters all the Jews to the four corners of the wind. 
And that's where Peter says the end of all things is near. And for Peter and the Christians at that time, as far as they were concerned, the, the life as they know it was coming to an end. It was coming to an end at that time. Peter's world. And Peter writes in chapter 1, verse 1, Peter, an apostle of Peter, of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, strangers in the world, scattered through Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia. He, he tells them, you're strangers. And there's three great things here in the book of uh, Peter in this whole chapter. Number one, we have to remember something and be reminded. Can, can I remind you of something this morning in case you've kind of gotten caught up with the world? That we are aliens and strangers in this world. We are just passing through. This is not our home. This is not where it ends up for us. We need to get that into our heart and get visions of heaven all, all over again. We need to understand that, that He's coming back soon, and that the Lord's return is imminent. And we need to understand this present world is not going to last and go on. The end of the world and its corruption, its evil, and all the wickedness will not last forever. It's coming to an end. The only thing that will remain and be standing at the time of the end is the kingdom of God and the citizens of the kingdom. It says in Philippians, but our citizenship is in heaven. We eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus, who by the power that enables Him to bring everything under His control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like His glorious body. Wasn't there a song that said, oh, so close, so close, and yet so far? Had those lyrics. Yeah. It's that hollow notes that sang. I forget who sang that. But heaven just seems so close, but oh so far, doesn't it? It just seems like so close, but it's so far. Man, it's through much tribulation, we've got to get there. It's so close, but it's so far. So much is going on. The second thing Peter was always encouraging them was to live holy lives. Not only to keep your eye on heaven. And the reason why he told them keep your eye on heaven, because all that they were going through on earth. With all that we're going through on earth, we can't lose sight of heaven. We can't lose sight of heaven. You've got, to be you've got to be taken up with the fact that you're going to be there one day. We're going to all stand before God one day. And we need to live a holy life. That's the second thing he says. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. It's too late in the action. We've come this far. We're so close. We can't blow this thing. We can't blow it. There was a New York Yankees pitcher, C.C. Sabathia. Mm -hmm who had a bonus, an incentive-based bonus, that if he pitched 155 innings this year, he would get an incentive bonus for half a million dollars, $500,000. And inning number 153 in a series with the Tampa Bay Rays, they were in the midst of the series and it was getting intense, it was getting testy, and then they started, the pitchers started to drill the batters purposely with these 97 mile an hour fastballs. And he gets up there in inning number 153 and throws a 97 mile an hour fastball purposely at a devil race pitch a batter and he gets tossed out of the game. He just forfeited $500,000. He got caught up in the emotion. He got caught up in all that was intense. He got caught up with you know what his team, the other team was doing? And he writes, he, he was quoted, I don't really make decisions based on money. I guess just felt like it was the right thing to do. Don't you wish you had a half million dollars to just, ah, who cares? How many would, you know, love to have a half million dollars? Just, I don't care. Just go ahead and I'll just be rid of that. You know what I mean? And when he walked off the field, he, you know, he said, that's for you, you whatever. Peter says the time of the end is at hand. It's imminent. It's close. We can't get caught up in the emotion. We can't get caught up in all that is, you know, going wrong. Paul, Peter says, be clear-minded and self-controlled. The opposite of that, you know, is frenzy. It's madness where we get the Greek word mania. Mania has synonyms such as madness, insanity, lunacy. That's what that would describe the Judiciary Senate Committee meetings that went on last week with Kevin R. and Lazy Ford. It was lunacy. It was mania. 
It was maniacal. It was off the charts. Off the charts. And our founding fathers are rolling over in their graves. Of the foundations, if those be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The psalmist asked. What can the righteous do? And I worry about the foundations of our own Christianity. I worry about what our founding fathers laid for us as far as the Word of God. There is a mega pastor I just read about who basically has told his congregation, you know, pretty much disregard the entire Old Testament. Don't hit your faith to that anymore. We don't need to build monuments to that anymore. We don't need those Ten Commandments anymore. Basically, it's what he's done. Basically, it's what he's done. How terrifying. How terrifying. I got halfway through his book this past summer, let him kick my butt for a little while, and, and I finally I said, something not adding up here, and I just threw the thing in the trash can. Something not adding up here. We have to... Keep this. God has exalted His Word above His name, above His Himself. Amen. And it's a balancing act in these last days to, you know, to live this Word and to teach it and preach it. I mean, we can make this thing sound like anything we want. You know what I'm saying? And we can adjust this Word to match our lifestyle, or we can match our lifestyle to, you know, to this Word. That's our choice. That's our choice. But Peter told them to have an eye towards heaven, have an eye toward themselves, and be holy. And then lastly, he tells them, have an eye toward others. And this is where our holy lives have to match our holy service. They have to match you one another. Remember, Jesus said in Matthew 24, 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness, and then the end will come. That word Jesus used for witness is the Greek word for testimony, and it means proof of fact. And what Jesus says here, it's not just pre preaching, it is presenting in the testimony. And what he's saying here, this gospel that we preach is effective only if it's backed up by a life that testifies to its reality. Amen? The gospel we preach is effective only if it's backed up by a life that testifies to its reality. We got thousands of churches in America. Certainly the gospel's going out in all four corners, correct? Not if it's compromised. Because if the gospel's compromised, you're talking lives that are compromised. When lives are compromised, testimony's compromised, and out goes the power. Out goes the power. I remember reading a devotional by David Wilkerson talking about a, a big church, a large church that was growing so big, the pastor said, we gotta build a new building. We gotta handle all these numbers. And he studied the church growth movement and all this stuff. And his own wife kind of put the brakes on and said, I really feel the Spirit of God is telling us we need to pray. We need to seek the face of God. Something is not right here. I'm not feeling peace about this. And he, you know, like a wise man, he took his wife's directives. He began to pray as well. And the Holy Spirit really kind of clicked in his heart and said, we got to take care of this testimony of ours because right now we don't have a testimony. And what he did was, on a Sunday morning, he brought in this big screen, and on the screen into the projector, he loaded all these sins, all these sins, and said, God has been speaking to me about the sins of this church, and today we're going to see them in front of our eyes. And he flashes up fornication, and adultery, and alcoholism, and drug abuse, and pornography. And he says to the church, we're not about to start building a big church right now. We've got to get Christ's living tabernacle straightened out before we can do anything else. We have to live this gospel first. And at the bottom part of the devotional, Wilkerson writes these words, Today the Spirit of God is moving mightily in that church. People are flocking to the Lord, getting their lives straight because they are hearing a gospel with a testimony behind it. Amen. 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 I'll tell you, <laughs> wouldn't it be nice if miracles and healings and salvations and all kinds of supernatural things would happen that are not events that we need to, you know, kind of go and get in our cars to go see and experience why not happening in the normal course of church life? You know what I'm saying? I mean, wasn't it Peter's shadow? Peter, can you come help me with something over here? And Peter walks over. His shadow falls upon a lame person 
who's laying there crippled and his shadow causes them to be healed and they get up and rise and praise God. Anything more natural than that? How about the Apostle Paul who's a tent maker and he's working away building tents and he's sweating and he takes a, a little handkerchief and wipes the sweat off his brow and all of a sudden he puts it down and walks away. Somebody grabs that and brings it to a sick person and they put it on their body and they get healed. Amen. How about a guy named Stephen, the deacon who was full of God's grace and power, did great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. These were not specifically, specially anointed ministers. They were your average Joes who were called of God, who were anointed of God, and who Jesus said, more miracles you will do than this because I go to my Father. Amen? I long for the day when the supernatural becomes the norm. On any given Sunday, was any given Sunday, on Father's Day 1995, when a revival broke out at Brownsville, and if you watch that video of that day, things could have looked at more normal, they couldn't have looked like on any given Sunday, it looked like church as usual, until Steve Hill got up there, and the floodgates of heaven opened up, the church had been praying for two and a half years for a revival, God gave the one that was twice as long, five years long. Amen? Oh, God wants to do it here, everybody. We need revival. We need revival. But what I'm saying to you is back in the early church, they brought the gospel into the neighborhood. We're trying to bring the neighborhood here to, you know, to hear the gospel. And it's just not happening. The power of God is out there. God may send his power here to fill us up, but he said, I'm going to give you my power, but you need to bring it out there. I believe miracles can happen out there, out in the world, where the harvest is ripe. It's white for harvest. Amen? But we try to do all this and reproduce it in a controlled environment. I'm telling you, we're like Gideon. Where are the wonders? Where are the miracles that our forefathers told us about? I don't know about you, but I'm tired of asking that question. I'm tired of being Gideon. Said, Lord, 2018 is a good year. 2019 yes. be a great year to see the power of God yes. fall. Amen. Yes. Upon Bread of Life Church. I think a couple of things are, are hindrances to all that. Number one, over the course of time, the church went from living in community to becoming isolationist. We really are very private people. We are very private. We isolate ourselves. The early church were not isolated believers. They were not spectators. They were participants. They were itching to get in the game. There was no spectating at prayer meetings. They didn't watch each other pray. They got involved. They prayed. They were involved. There's no way they were individual believers apart from community. They were part of a community. When the community had a problem, they were part of it. When they, when they praised God, they were part of it. Those that suffered, community suffered. Those that celebrated, the community celebrated. They're all about relationships, not religious activities. The other thing about them is that what crept in was ownership. And what's crept into the church today is ownership. It's not about ownership, everybody. It's about stewardship. Yes. Don't let ownership get into your brain. I own this thing. I, I own that. I own this. I own that. I, these are my talents. These are my abilities. These are my possessions. This is my money. No, you're just a steward. I'm sorry to break it to you gently. You are a steward. The Bible is all about stewardship. It's not about ownership. He's the owner of the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns it all, everybody. A can, as Thomas Jefferson once said, a candle loses nothing when it lights another candle. It's all about sharing. When you share, you do not lose. When you share, you multiply. Amen? Amen. And God will always have himself a testimony, and a testimony of a God who lives and reigns not only in this world, in this universe, but in a church and in the homes and lives of his people. Peter mentioned six things here real quick, and we'll get through them. He just says here, number one, keep your head. Be clear-minded and self-controlled. The original language said not be swept away by emotions or passion. Don't give in to fear. Don't panic. Don't let today's headlines discourage you. Don't let what you see with the visible eye bring you down. Don't let you know, what you hear, what is, you know, what's going on in our world, you know, put you off course as far as your individual faith and your trust in God for your situation. 
A lot of bads going on in our nation right now. A lot of fighting, a lot of stuff going down. A lot of ugly stuff. The mud is flying, is it not? Don't let it, don't let it get you off course. Be clear-minded. Just be focused on Him. Say, Lord, let me make a difference. Let me be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Don't lose your head. He says, keep praying. Be clear-minded and self-control. Why? So that you can pray. Kings and rulers may have stopped the Christians from serving back then, but they sure could not stop them from praying. And neither can anyone stop you from praying today. Amen. You're, the, you're the one who's got the, all the power of heaven you know, behind you when you pray. Right. Especially your parents. Especially your priest of the home. Especially you that stand in the gap between a prodigal son and daughter who's running from God. You are the, you're the fulcrum by which, you know, they're... Their destiny may swing because of your prayers. Your prayers can change things. Your prayers can move the hand of God. Your prayers are powerful. And don't let the devil tell you they're not. Because he will tell you they are a waste of time. And you could be doing other things. And you could go out there and, you know, sow your wild oats rather than pray. But you need to be praying, Mom and Dad. You need to be praying, Grandparent. You Come need on. to be praying, everybody. I refuse to let today's headlines and all that's going down get me off course to my faith in God and keep my, my bearing on Him. Amen? Amen? He's coming back soon. We were, we're being prepared for such a time as this, everybody. No matter how bad it gets, no matter how worse it gets, God can do the best of things in the worst of times. And then He says, keep loving above all Love each other deeply because love covers over a multiple multiple sins. It's talking about in the King James Version, fervent, which means stretched out, out to full capacity, like a horse at full gallop, like a runner, an athlete stretching, trying to cross that finish line. There needs to be effort, an all-out effort to love one another. And some people are easier to love than others. How many would we say amen? Some people wow. are easy to love. <laughs> Or is it easy to love and hard to like? I don't know. But, you know, there's an all-out effort to love one another, to, you know, and fellowship one another. Remember, these people are going through times of great stress, great persecution, great times of turmoil. And sometimes you can get on each other's nerves when you're going through great distress. And there's problems and there's difficulties. There could be tensions that are taken out. And that's when faults become very thick is when love is thin. When you got love that's thick, the faults are thin. When you got faults that are thick, that means that love is thin. And that's what Peter is telling them here. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over multiple sins. And this one here that to me has been lost today, be hospitable. Be hospitable. <laughs> and I'm not saying this because I want you to do this. But we haven't been invited over anyone's house for dinner in years. Don't invite us over for dinner because I'm saying this. But boy, isn't it true that 30 years ago, come on in. Amen? I know she showed a comedian one time, talked about hospitality. But man, some of you have the gift of hospitality. They're Pastor Ron and Katie. They have the... They have a gift of hospitality. People are always over their house. We always show up at their house. People show up whether they like it or not. <laughs> but they have a gift of hospitality. Don and Marshall does. People do. But boy, oh boy. You know what I'm saying? Just kind of not the same as it used to be. There was always people showing up. My uncles would show up. My aunts would show up. Friends of my parents would show up when I was a boy, and I'd do all I can to hide from them with my little blanket and run up the stairs to the bedroom so I wouldn't have to say, Gary, come say hi to Mr. and Mrs. Cormier. Hi. Yeah, Pop Warner football. We get killed last week. Yeah, whatever. Peter says, offer hospitality. Remember, these people are going through persecution. They've been scattered. They're on the run. And he's telling them, open your homes to them. And it was no big deal to open your home for three days for somebody who's being chased by the authorities because they're Christians. And Paul and Peter and Barnabas, Silas, all these guys needed a place to stay. And Peter's encouraging them, I know you're all running for your lives. There's people running for their lives. Take them in, love on them, bless them, and send them on their merry way. 
You wonder if the day is coming that may be repeated. Amen? Amen. You really wonder if that's coming back. Amen? We may not have a cozy church anymore. This could be something else. Brother Life may be scattered to the wind. Who knows? Never know. You never know what's going on. Remember I said the difference between them and us? What the world was doing to them, what the world's doing to each other? Wonder if that may change. Wonder if that may change. They might not like us so much anymore. Want to do something about us. Number five, keep serving. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. You know, the greatest day of your life is when you discover ministry that God has gifted you to perform that doesn't require to be for you to be somebody that you are not, but to be somebody who God has uniquely made. That'll be the greatest day in your life when you're firing on all cylinders, when your vocation kicks in, when your personality kicks in, when your passion kicks in, and they all work together for a God-ordained ministry and what He has wired and made you to become because there are things that I do better than you and there are things that you do better than me and there are things that I cannot do that you can do and vice versa and on and on it goes and the spice of life is variety and to me that's what God loves. He loves variety. There are no two snowflakes alike and He does not, He's not created the same people there's not another one of you. And everybody said, Amen. Amen? Yeah. I love the quote that says, A $50,000 violin hanging silently and dusty on the wall is not worth as much as the kitchen spoon that is used to feed an orphan. Yeah, Hallelujah. Wow. Lastly, lastly, or can I say this, that, you know, those sheets of papers that you have there, don't discard those. Put those in your Bible. You don't have to fill it out today. You don't have to sneak it under my office door today. Pray and say, God, what would you have me to do? Yes. God, how have you wired me? How have you made me? Yes. Well, how have you, what, whatever it is, Lord. Perhaps, Lord, just the fire has gone out in that area. Mm. Stoke it, Lord. Stoke it like a straw. Just stir up the gifts and talents Hallelujah. inside of my life. Come on. Open me up, Lord. Help me to come out of my shell. Yeah. Help me to come out of my isolation. Help me to come out from just being wrapped up with me and my life and my stuff that's going on. I promise you, there's nothing like fellowship. There's nothing like working alongside yes. of people. Yes. There's nothing like working for the Lord and serving God and leaving here on a Sunday morning or leaving some ministry event out there and heading home knowing that you have, you have poured out for the Lord, you have discharged yourself, you have done something that matters in somebody else's life. Yes. I was just praying that this week, said, Lord, I want to make a difference. I just watching on my, my computer this week, the Convoy of Hope and the testimonies that go on there. And then the other one was Eight Days of Hope. I'm watching that. And this poor family whose house has just been destroyed by a storm. And all these volunteers going in there and just holding hands and praying. And then they get to work. Men and women tearing down and demoing. And then wiring and plumbing. And just the testimony of this very grateful couple that life was just destroyed in a moment. Suddenly seeing these volunteers rebuild their house. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing like it. And I just sat there at my desk and said, Lord, what am I doing for you? What am I doing for you? I can swing a hammer. I can do that. I can do whatever. I can get on a roof. I'm not that skilled. But Lord, I want to make a difference in people's lives. I want to make a difference for the kingdom of God. I don't want to stand before the Lord God Almighty and have stuff just be burnt up in wood, hay, and stubble. I want to do gold, silver, precious mineral stuff. And all these ministries are that. And even more so. And God is just making himself a church. He's re remade bread of life, everybody. We are brand new. We are new wineskins. Right. And we're believing Amen. God for new wine to be poured in. We are not the same. Look around. Too many brown chairs that are empty in this place. Drives me crazy. I, maybe they're filled with angels this morning to encourage me. But we need to fill the place back up again. Yes. We need to see Bread of Life filled back up again. And we need to see the ministry of Bread of Life spreading out to this community in North Central Mass. Number six, lastly, we are to live for the glory of God. 
our goal should be is glory. I know I, I, I want to go home. I wanted to go home this week. I just was felt so unclean. I felt so bad. I felt so bad for Judge Kavanaugh and his family and his wife. I felt so bad for, for Christine Blasey Ford. I felt bad for her too. They are just pawns. She's a pawn. She's a pawn. She's being used. I feel bad for her. I feel bad for Judge Kavanaugh. That's really all I can say about it. Yes. This thing's a joke. Yes. It is a joke. And I, that's why I said, Lord, help us. Help us, Lord. How's this going to turn out? What's going to happen next? He said, she said. She said, he said. Who's going to go anywhere with that? Our nation's just being torn asunder. Yes. What's our role in all this? What's God's plan? The enemy has a plot. God has a plan. That's right. Yeah. He's not wringing his, his, biting his nails in heaven. But I know exactly what I'm going to do. Mm. He knew back in eternity past what he's going to do. And I just, I just say to this, and I just want to encourage you. Keep your head in all things. That this is about the glory of God. It's about not our glory, but his glory. How can we bring him glory? What can we say to God? Said, Lord, let my life and my service not be a contradiction, but let it reflect the glory of the Lord in these last days. That's why Peter is saying all these things to these people. Some of them are going to wind up martyred. Some of them are not going to live very much longer. And yet he's got this ministry list. You think he was at Bread of Life that morning on any given Sunday before we're ready to enjoy a nice meal and soup and salad and watch a football game. He's talking to people that were going out there to be martyred. Some of them winding up in the Colosseums. Some of them about to be torn to shreds by lions. Some of them be ready to run through with swords. That's who he's talking to this morning. And I'm looking at people this morning that are ready to fellowship and enjoy a good time together. And we'll praise God for that. Amen? Amen? Praise God for that. But just remember who you are in Christ. Yep. And remember whose you are. And remember that He's coming back very, very soon. Amen? Amen. I'm going to invite the worship team to come back up this morning. Hallelujah. We're just going to sing one song this morning. Unless the Holy Spirit has other ideas. We're open for that. Let's stand together in the house of the Lord, everybody. Let's stand together. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is a song, but to me it's a prayer. And to me it's an, it's an invitation for yourself to make an altar in your heart. Not just an altar here. This altar is open but to really make a declaration from the heart that, Lord, here am I. Here am I, Lord, send me. That's what Isaiah prays after the vision of the Lord he has of the Lord. Here am I, just send me. We used to have these kinds of songs sung in Bible college. Pastor Joel, Angie would know that. Judas would know that. Rebecca would know that. Those services where the Spirit of God just like is calling. The Spirit of God is just reaching out, says, who will I send? Who will I send? Who will go for me? Who will speak for me? Who will serve for me? Who will do for me? Who will be my witness, my testimony of my gospel to a lost and dying world? Who will it be? Will it be you this morning? Will it be you this morning? I just sing that song because from here on in it's between you and God. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, we give you praise this morning, Lord. We stand before you as your church. Bread of life, church, Lord. A group of individual believers, but Lord, Father, we are connected in you. We are connected in Christ. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for church, wonderful people. Thank you for ministry opportunities that are before us. An opportunity, Lord, to make a difference, both inside and outside, Lord, the church. But, Lord, we're part of the greater universal body of Christ. And, Lord God, let us be occupying until you come. Let us be, Lord, about your business. When the Son of Man returns, will he find faith, Lord, find faith. May we have faith. May we not lose our heads, but keep control, be sober-minded, and be, Lord, focused on you. Just have a laser-like focus on you, Jesus. And, Lord, for the harvest of souls that, Lord, you want to bring in. Lord, make it happen, oh God. Through our lives, through us, Lord, you can do it without us, for us, but Lord, I know you want to do it through us. So Father, do it through us. Do it through us. Let us see exploits. Let your people that know their God do exploits. Let there be, Lord, not sensational, but Lord, the supernatural. Let there be holy fire, not wildfire. Let their Lord God be, Lord, the norm would be the manifest presence of God going with us, Lord, out these doors to a lost and dying world. Let us begin, Lord God, to really see, Lord, the power of God in in these last days. Let us not be like Gideon who asked, where is the power gone? Why there no wonders, Lord? Bring back the wonders. And may they, Lord, bring glory to our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I'll just sing one last song this morning. Better is one day, hallelujah. And close with this. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Better is one day.
lunch. Guys, you can help us pick up chairs. Oh, We're going to roll out some you. tables. Again, leave that whole section over there open. Stay for fellowship and some fun. We're going to have a great time together. Amen. God bless you, everybody.